I will call the meeting to see the grade school committee to order at 703. The first order of business is to uh, review and approve the business of September. Oh, I think uh, this meeting is being recorded. And then held in hybrid fashion. Uh, we're going to review and approve the minutes of September 14, 2023. There's the foundation. All in favor of approving the minutes? So, and I would say, okay. I just think it's a projector. Oh. <clears throat> Can you hear us if we're talking louder or is it not at all? We can we can hear you, but it's really garbled. Like we're hearing a lot of background noise. Peanut gallery. That was the teaching <laughs> staff. <laughs> <laughs> Or is it the air? Is it the vent? I can bring you like a little bit closer. So you hi, Lisa. Hi, Vicki. Hi. Sounds better already. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Much better. All right. So shall I okay. Uh, I'm going to start with the warrant totals and then we'll talk about 24 and I have a little bit of a heads up info for us to start thinking about 25 even though we're not really in budget season yet. Uh, so the warrants totaled uh, $266,726.70 and there were 15 warrants signed electronically since the last meeting. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the points on the expense report of things that I think you may have flagged as questions. If I don't touch on something that you want to know about, let me know. Uh, but we're still working out some of the salary accounts, particularly related to central office. So I don't expect that there will be overages on superintendent salaries or business office salaries. If you were to look at the report on page one, for example, it says union accounting staff, there's 21,000 available in one line, but then it says other accounting staff is negative 8,000. There's a staff member in the wrong spot. So I just need to work it out with payroll to get everybody in the right line items. We should not have actual overages there. Those budgets should be spent for what we put them in for. I just don't want you to think that we have thousands of dollars of overages, especially in central office accounts. Um, we did talk about teacher salaries being over uh i think it's just for accounting purposes i think we were originally going to pay for a teacher on esser but to save the nine percent mtrs fee we're paying a different expense off of that so it looks like teachers are over but in the end the bottom line budget will be okay uh, so that's a little explanation there I'm still watching building expenses because we have spent a good chunk of our maintenance budget like we talked about last month. And let's see. Ground services, we are over. That was primarily the overage on the mulch installation this summer. That sort of ate up the rest of that budget. And I don't think there's anything else major. Liability insurance with the town, that is a true overage. The rates went up there. Not much we can do about that. The one account that I am watching that's a new conversation is special ed transportation. All of our routes district wide are coming in higher than we budgeted for and anticipated over the summer. The positive news is that Deerfield is supposed to receive, the estimate was about 100,000 for rural aid. So while we're in conversation about how do we spend that and are we going to offset budgets next year, if transportation for special education is 15 to 20,000 over, which is right now the current estimate to get us through the year, we will have funds to use that. We won't have to dip into school choice. We could also use school choice. Deerfield has a healthy school choice balance. So just a couple of things that I wanted to clear up there. There's no major points of concern. We have plenty of money in the budget and I'm not expecting any issues, but wanted to point out some accounts. Did I miss anything that anyone has specific questions about? 
you just said that there was things to bring attention to. You haven't gotten to that yet. For 25, yeah. Okay. I'm going to talk about that now. Um, so we won't do a budget presentation. The first draft won't get done until January. Uh, administratively, we'll start thinking about it in November and December, and then January we'll do the first presentation. But uh, Darius and I, or at least I'm already in budget mode, thinking about um, things that we have to plan for first steps in the budget building process. So uh, COLAs, steps, column movement, teacher retirement, so sick buyback payouts. These pieces are going to hit Deerfield pretty hard this year. We have three retirements that are going to have to be paid sick buyback in fiscal year 25. I did some rough estimates today. I think we're probably looking at 75 to $80,000 and we only budget for 30. So that's going to be a significant talking point for us. Uh, we have four staff making column movement. So that's important for us to be aware of in that not only are they getting the step increase in the COLA, which is typically about 5.3%, they're gonna see column movement as well. So that raise for those four staff may be seven or 8%, depending on where they're advancing to. So I'm just bringing these up because it's all going to escalate our budget. If, just as a reminder from last year, wages alone were over a 3% increase for fiscal year 24. I'm expecting we're going to be well over that. And then we are going to have some challenges to work out, particularly related to sick buyback. Um, longevity requests is something that I also look at. I actually think Deerfield's going to see a little bit of savings in longevity requests because we have a couple people coming off of that four-year cycle of longevity that they get in the contract, or three-year cycle, I'm sorry, they get 4,000 for three years um, once they request it after 15 years of service. So there's a couple of teachers, this is their third year, and I think we only have one new teacher coming on. So that'll help us offset some of the column movements, but I'm particularly concerned about the sick buyback. You know, uh, 60 to 80,000 is over 1% of right. our budget. So, and it's not a recurring expense. I think right. Deerfield does a really good job of holding 30,000. One teacher, maybe a teacher and a half or a teacher and IA that typically covers. Three is a significant number for us to, to come up with funds for. So we'll have to have conversations about that. I just wanted to get you guys thinking about it now because I think it's going to be a, another more challenging budget support for us. And just for clarity's sake, that's when folks don't use up their sick time and they get paid for it? Right. Okay. So the contract allows them two days per year of service. And then there's some additional things if they've been in the district for over 10 years. So. And it's at healthy? their daily rate of pay upon <laughs> retirement. So. Well, there's usually, just as a former state employee, there's, mm -hmm. there can be a huge lag between like when pension actually starts to pay you, like three to four to five to six months. So mm -hmm. often times that can be what people actually have to live on. Um, so, you know, so, yeah. so of, or municipal, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm not sure if it's in particular, but I think sometimes that's, gets left out, like, oh, they get this money, and then, but then there's yeah. also like four months of living without pension. So with, when they retired, typically you'd be hiring three new teachers at a lower. That's the goal. That's the goal, but it's hard. It's <laughs> it hard is hard, especially them. when the applicant pools are small. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which we're facing district wide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And sure. even veteran teachers are moving districts we're seeing. You know, teachers coming in with 12, 13, 14 years experience. Right. We'll yeah, it used that. to be uh, you couldn't move after your seventh year. You would be almost unhirable. Right. Um, and now it's an open market because of the supply and demand. Yeah. Yeah, the so thing I was. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just thinking that I was looking at it in terms of like hoping it wasn't that it was vacation time people weren't able to take and then therefore so that if it's you know no, there's no vacation time in the teacher contract we would pay vacation time <laughs> um, if it were an administrative or secretarial or custodial employee but. Um, it's sick time. Okay. Yeah. I just had a question, just more like vernacular. I think that followed most of the phrases that you used. What's the column raise versus are just upgrades and how does that all So uh, as teachers advance their education, so state requires a minimum, right? You can come in and get a waiver, start as a bachelor's, but you have to get a master's within so many years. And then you can go to master's plus 15 graduate credits, 
plus mm -hmm. 30 plus 45. I forget what they this contract it. has. So plus 45. Four, five, I don't think you have yeah. 30 though, right? Yes. 15. You have 30, yeah, but you don't have 15. Yeah, this one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Anyway, so as they gain more graduate credits, they can do pollen movement. So they have to apply for that. They basically submit notice to Darius that they are going to complete X number of graduate credits by X time frame, and then it gets applied the following year. It's yeah. smarter yeah. teachers. It's yeah, smarter it's, teachers. it's a great thing. Yeah. It is a good us. thing. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Our own budget. Good for us. Yeah. That's all I have. Great. 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 Let's on the budget and move on to the principal's report. Yeah, first. Um, welcome back. But actually, I missed the first meeting, so it's good to see everybody. And it's see great you. to see you again, Trevor, good on the too. committee with us. Yeah. Um, so we're off to a, a really good start. We hit the ground running. Um, I have the instructional so two members of the instructional leadership team with me uh, to present us some of the initiatives that we're doing. Right now, um, I know Jillian, I said that you would start, but now I'm rolling, so. <laughs> so some of the things that we're focusing on is that we really follow the work of the research of John Hattie, who is a leader in educational research and meta-analysis and talks about physical learning and the effect size. What are some of the strategies that give us the most bang for the buck, if you will, around impact for student learning? And um, one of the things that struck me personally over the summer as I was listening to a podcast where John was, uh, John is my buddy now. <laughs> Exactly. Call him sometimes. Um, he was he was saying that <laughs> you guys can't sit across from me and laugh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so he was he was mentioning that one of the biggest uh, obstacles in education isn't bigger class sizes or test scores. It's really our ability to be courageous. And you may not know what teachers have to go through to be courageous, but we're, when you're sharing your data in a data meeting, and they're they're kind of holding that as like they're feeling responsible if students are not able to achieve and grow, and that can be, or even just some of the successes can also be courageous. So we're really working on put uh, practicing a courageous mindset and putting uh, different plans in place for us to even just kind of. Um, rumble with it a little bit. So we have our data meetings where we workshop problems around like stall learning or, and that could be on the higher end of things where students are already exceeding, but how do we continue to make them grow? And on the um, lower end of things where they're stalled and you know we, we're not able to kind of move them along so we can workshop collaboratively together. Another thing we're working on is classroom colleague collaboration. Um, which is getting into other people's classrooms and being open to inviting somebody in to see what what we're doing or what we're feeling like we're good at or just saying hey can you come on in and look at this i'm wondering about my pacing uh, we have some new curriculum that julian will uh, speak to so those are some of the things that we're really working on as a collective um team so, i know julian if you want to go next or julian hi <laughs> so um we're doing things a little bit differently this year, and a lot of it is we've, we've been looking at, at John. Yeah, John, we're, here, yes. we're all friends and, uh, We're all kind of enamored of some of us are the, the, the geekiness of the geeks are yeah. really enamored by him. And so we've been looking at his work and what are the elements of teaching and learning, what has the highest impact. And so one of the things that we're really diving into this year is that among many of our values, one of our top values is really including privilege, uh, privileging evidence over opinion. And so that sounds sort of like, well, what, what does that mean? Of course, you're going to, but you know, a lot of us will, will look at something, you know, you know, I've got a feeling about this kid, or this is a bad thing. So we're really kind of staying away from that. We're really privileging evidence. So at the beginning of the year, we really did a very deep dive, hours and hours looking at data and looking at lots of standardized tests that we take and tests, tests and NEWAs and screeners. I mean, we won't get into it, but a lot of different pieces of evidence. And we looked at that and we really, it's, it's called the discovery stage. It's the first stage. There are five different stages, but the first stage is a very in-depth discovery where we're really using the evidence. So we're not just kind of looking at one score or we're not looking at MCAS, for example, we're looking at many different data points. And, and 
trying to come up with a, a, a challenge, and there are many. Um, our MCAS scores were not wonderful, so we're really looking at that. Um, and they're very comparable to the other the other data. It wasn't like MCAS was you know not great, and then all the other data was great. So we're really looking at all right, what are the problems very specifically? And we identified reading literacy as a priority. Not that there aren't many other priorities, but literacy is a main priority because let's face it, you can't you can't read a math problem. You, you, if you can't read it, you can't solve it. Um, if you can't understand what the processes are for a science experiment, because you can't read it, you can't do science and so on. So we really did this in-depth look at what um, the data is telling us. And so we did come up with a, um, and we identified this one challenge for the entire school. And this is brand new because normally teachers come in, we sit as grade level teams, and different teachers, I mean, even within a grade level, one teacher might say, I'm gonna look at this, another teacher might say, I'm looking at this. So we're doing it really differently because we, the, the ILT actually created the challenge this year. Um, so that it's cohesive, it's across all the different grades. And this is the challenge. Students in grades A through six will increase reading achievement demonstrated across multiple effective sources. So we started our data meetings, and that's really the, the goal that we identified after spending a lot of time looking and deciding. So we're, we're pretty excited. Um, literacy is huge, as you know. If, if I mean, the, the implications for young adults and for adults if they're not reading are, are pretty grim. So with that said, we chose this as a, a very large goal to increase increased achievement for all students in six. And um, right now, we're just looking at our data and continuing it. We have a whole, I, I won't go into it, but there's a whole five-step process of discovery. It starts with discovery, and then it gets into designing actions and so on. Um, so that's sort of where we are with our data meetings. And then in terms of the new program that we have, it's a new English language arts program that everybody K through six in the whole in district and all of our schools in Unit 38 are, are using right now. Um, it's it's hard and it's rigorous and we're we're pretty I think a lot of us are really excited. Um, it's taking a little while to get used to it because it's it's just very locked. I mean, you should see the manuals. It's like it's it's a lot. Um, but so we that said, also we're very appreciative of the time that we have on early release Fridays, where we have that time to actually collaborate and dive in and look and plan and assess and assess together. Uh, I mean, there's there's no professional development quite like it where we're actually embedded in the work that we're doing and looking at real student work um, and, and looking at like these kids need this really differentiating, which I know is something that came up in the audit, but really differentiating so that we're looking at what individual groups of students need. And just like Tina said, those, those students who are, who are high, like we don't want to just say they're good. We want to be looking at, okay, what can we do for those students? Um, so. Right. And then the third part that we wanted to share tonight, um, you know, kind of combines both what we heard in the equity audit and also our um, commitment to having a courageous mindset this year, and that is bringing in more student voice. So one thing that we're working on is creating a student survey where we're really putting out, um, actually we're putting it out this month, kids are going to be doing it, and um, you know, it's a vulnerable place to ask kids, how do you feel about your learning? How do you feel about your teachers? Do you feel safe in school? Do you feel like you're being engaged each day? Um, and then looking at those results and then, uh, you know, making decisions about how we are being in our teams, what we can change about our teaching, about our school um, culture, and about our curriculum. So that's something that will be happening with students this, this month. And then also um, families and the staff will also get surveys. So we'll bring it all together with our equity audit and with our courageous mindset and just keep reflecting our practice to do better for the kids. And that ties into evidence based, right? Because mm -hmm. that's really that's our evidence right there. We can say, I think our, my kids are really happy and they're engaged, but we don't really know it until we hear from them. Um, I was just curious how you're doing the surveys. Are they all like are they different in different formats? Or? So yeah, there are yeah, there are three different it, surveys. Yeah. 
and they're so they're doing it during their library time. So Miss Danak sees all of the kids in the whole building. So she's working with us to implement it during the media time, and we've sort of um, adjusted the questions according to the grade level, so the kids can access the information. IA is really working with. You know, we'll cut them in small groups so they can understand what we're asking. So they're all written or, or oh, I'm sorry, it's a Google, it's a Google form. Okay. That would be good. Yeah. Well, those are always good for getting the data sorted for you. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking in terms of you're talking about literacy and then also the yeah, the yeah, 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 the information. That's, that's why we're doing some small groups so that adults can read the questions and kind of make sure everybody understands and then. Yeah. Well, I hope there's Yeah. 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 We're also tossing around the idea of doing an exit test, uh, exit survey for sixth grade, a test on the assessment. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're we're thinking about that too to see what um, in sixth grade what how they reflect on their experience mm -hmm. at Deerfield Elementary okay. School. So. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I will send out a um, the Google form because there's a lot of links in here. If you do have some extra time and just want to cuddle up and click on all those links and learn about what we do. Thanks. I don't know. Maybe they do. No. You said cuddle up. Cuddle up with the cozy up. Sorry, cozy up. Sorry, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Thanks. It all works. We're a tight team. We need some tight team involved with cuddles. It's trying to improve our readings. Cuddles, cuddles, cuddles. Whatever you need. Here for you. Thanks, all right, I'm just going to drink this now. Thank you, Gina, and Jennifer. I'm not going to off. No, you're good. Yes, I should probably stop. All right, so next up, we have public comments. Okay, next up. Uh, a follow up to the equity audit presentation, equity audit presentation on 928 uh, and the discussion. So, uh, first of all, um, at the meeting, there was, we did not have a quorum of Deerfield and Frontier and someone else until after the meeting started. So, the agenda had us reorganizing, but we did not reorganize. Um, we chose a chair for that meeting only, and we will reorganize at the next meeting. Next so, time we get together. Yeah, in this part. Or, yeah, you may have to get it before that. Um, um, so, so right. So the only thing about it is that so based because we had a because we had a presenter, we taped the meeting as a presentation, and so the meeting didn't actually open. It was never officially opened, so there's no meeting minutes and such. But we wanted to add it to the meeting minutes of this so that we properly documented that it occurred and that it's in place and such, because it was kind of a Hey, chairs, the meeting didn't exist, so there are no minutes. So therefore, okay. and it's kind of like, well, then it just gets lost in the annuals of time that it never really, this way it's kind of gets put in the minutes that way. Um, you know, technically, um, you know, in, in following open meeting law, they want to show transparency and attempt to whatever. So there was no votes. It's recorded um, in that kind of thing. So I don't think we're in any, any violation and such, but um, this way it's in the minutes now that the meeting occurred and and a recording is available. Uh, so the presentation, it was a 30 minute presentation with about an hour of conversation afterwards. Erica, did you have some questions about it? Um, I was, cover? Um, well, mostly I, it's great that there's the, because I was unable to attend, I was, um, just sort of curious if there were any particular issues that or questions that came up um, and that you know were eye-opening or anything like that. But I can also go and, and read, you know, watch the presentation and see. Does that include more than the presentation? Does it include all of the discussion? Okay. All right. Or eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, I mean, I can 
wait until I don't need to repeat things that have already been um, been asked. But yeah, in general, I was just curious to see how you know, it's. I didn't want to miss it, and so I make sure I knew what happened. No, I thought there were a lot of good questions. It was the presentation he he put a um, a positive, friendly spin on it. I felt um, he, the, he started off by acknowledging that it was deficit audit. So the right. audit was a list of where, mm -hmm. where we're not quite meeting it, but right. he said it, especially in retrospect, doing later on, we felt that we were doing pretty good. I think what struck me was the um, need to focus on the needs of, of low income for sure, because mm -hmm. that was, was an area that really. You know, I guess it's across the whole district, mainly AP classes and stuff where mm -hmm. uh, some don't have the ability or opportunity or uh, however, they're just not getting into the AP classes as much um, and other areas that the town could work on trying to make sure we have wraparound services for people to make sure that all people have an ability to get a good education, have that space to do it, time to do it. Um, I mean, there were there were a lot of other things too, but I just that for me struck out, stunned out to me that we need to work on that area for sure. And also, I'm realizing I one of the things uh, in general. I don't know if they addressed it in the meeting, but my overall from reading the audit ahead of time, I was curious if they had specific advice for the school committees in terms of what we should be doing to help because there was talk about like strategic planning and the vision um, seemed like, you know, I was just curious as to if they had any specific points um, for us to um, consider and work toward as, um, as a governing body. I don't think or, the president presenter gave anything in addition to what was already in the auto. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of and did that question come up at all? Or yeah, it was yeah. asked. Okay. It, was, it was asked. Yeah, for sure. I, I will say, yeah. from from my perspective, yeah. and I would be interested. And in maybe I don't know if this is the time for us to be talking about it. But what became clear from my vantage point of how important the elementary school from young age to support kids not only to ac access mm -hmm. equitable learning, but I think this is sort of where we come in. And my interpretation was especially early childhood learning is so important and particularly getting kids young. And so when we're talking about funding for early childhood mm -hmm. stuff, which at times can be underfunded, I think it hopefully will give us time to pause and really think about as a committee is, you know, we need to be considering it from an equity lens. And for really, sure. is that where we should be slashing? In my opinion, probably right. not. Right. You know, I'm biased because I have a kid, two kids in the early childhood mm -hmm. sector. But um, another thing it kind of got me thinking about is, you know, we do have income based payment options for families. And I, you know, I'm not sure how much the community is aware of that, just, right. just in talking with parents. Sure. Um, and I'm not sure how much they're aware of the deadlines to sign up for preschool because it's really sure. the first time parents are signing up for these things and their kid is approaching three and like they're they're just not aware that in January you have to be aware of what's going to happen in September. So I think that there's maybe some like communication and marketing that could be had, whether that's from us or sort of from the school around really making sure that we're reaching as many people as possible and maybe that means eventually expanding the preschool and getting kids and young um to help them yeah. close some of the gaps i agree with that yeah just and the parents can be coming from all different um all different age groups or you know young parents or you know that have not been involved in a lot of this oh i need to sign up this day like, oh, right yeah i've had you know the whole week off to plan this. Maybe they're working three jobs and they're like, don't have enough time to figure out when they need to apply and yeah. get the help. And I, I don't know really how it works as far as a application process and all the maybe we could do better about information. Right. Yeah. I mean, even the demographic of how many parents are. Um, it seems just from my own, you know, anecdotal thing. It seems like there are a lot of families with a single child, or they're the first child mm -hmm. coming through. 
and you know there's no manual for parenting and there's no manual for schooling a kid either yeah. so or summer you know, camps which apparently is oh, another thing it's not right you know so this <laughs> there's you just you don't know about it it's like oh the second year you get it because yes. the first year you miss it and the second and so i mean that's like one level on top of any of the equity issues too right. so um you know that sort of outreach to the community and um helping the parents help the kids as well as you know that meeting of the minds that um Certainly something to share. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, next up, we have uh, the uh, first reading of policies DJ, DJ, DJ. So, the uh, so right now, the policy committee, I think we're meeting next week, um, has the long list of policies from last year that we have to go through. Meanwhile, we still get more policies being sent to us from MASC. In this particular set, we received in August, and um, I put it on the agenda because it is very straightforward. It's the law. It's about um, purchasing um, and procurement requirements, and we're already kind of doing it, so we might as well get it through. And um, the big impact that this has is that um, They've changed, I think I talked about it last year, but they finally put the policies together. They changed, you know, you don't have to go out to bid um, until the mark reaches $100,000. It used to be $50,000. And that's it's huge. huge. That's, that's huge for schools. Um, it's for schools, not for fellows. Um, I but I think they're trying to give relief to schools um, that don't have procurement officers, which we do not have. Shelly has um, the official badge. <laughs> I will in two weeks. Very in nice. two weeks, you'll be <laughs> That's a lot of work. To wearing the golden jacket or whatever yes, is right. that you get. But, um, but you know, most schools don't have a procurement officer, and it takes a tremendous amount of time. We, every time we go out to bid, we use for a cog because it just isn't worth the drain on the one person I have doing everything else. Um, so, anyway. That's, the, that's really the basis of it in, in entirety. That's really DJE and the other one are smaller purchasing wording and such. But yep. so this is the first read and then you'll vote on it next month. Okay. Okay, next our business is to appoint an official delegate the mass conference for the uh, resolutions. Um, I am going to pretty oh very good. I'll nominate you then. Sorry, I will appoint myself Sounds as official delegate. Um, and while we're here, yeah. in the packet is the uh, resolutions for that. If that for the yep. policy update. Uh, Great. Yeah. When I when the delegate is voting, they're not voting for what they think is best. They're voting for their committee. So right. if anyone would like to provide input now, this would be a great time for it. If there's any of these. Um, for people who haven't been, like some of these, some of these I've read, and I'm like, I don't even know exactly what they're trying to say here about the benefits mm -hmm. that they, they do have, but each one is introduced and there's a discussion of each. Mm -hmm. I have found that very helpful in the past. Yeah. Um, so you're not necessarily voting on something that you read and don't fully understand. So, so if anyone has something, I don't know if you have a chance to read through these. I, this afternoon, I was like, oh, I should have reminded everyone that we will have a conversation about this, but I was somewhere waiting to have service, and I didn't send an email, so apologies. Thanks for Any strong opinions or things that would like clarified or questions? Let me get that time. I'm just looking at the one about transportation, yeah. trying to get wrap my hand around it. Um, the regional? Uh, 
Yeah. Or just preparing them and bidding. Right. So we'll Therefore, we resolve that to both committees, the association with the uh, to investigate the bidding practices as school transportation providers. Gary Caesar, do you have any, uh, in terms of the bidding process, do you have any that around transportation? So, yeah, you know, whenever it's through me, that does affect us. Um, you know, there's a lot of districts like ours that when you go out to bid for transportation, one bid one. Yep. Um, and we've actually been fortunate that uh, Gripco has come in competitively below our neighboring districts per bus per run. Um, and so, you know, it's one thing we're not kind of submit. Sorry. <laughs> He just clear his nostrils. Um, um, but the uh, there's a problem throughout the state because once a bus company is <laughs> like a, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, it's hard to have multiple bids because in order to if you want to bid for our district, you're going to need 11 buses. Yeah. So you got to have available buses to go into that bid or be able to secure those within the following year for that bid. So it's exactly. very hard for one company and some of the others. There used to be a lot of smaller companies around Western Mass, and they're starting to get bought out by uh, uh, the bigger ones. And then they, they have the ability to come in and swoop in. And then what's the one in Guild? Uh, and they do all the turners and stuff. Yeah, And who do you know from just Greenfield? The they all went in together. Oh, they gave this message. Oh, okay. And we did not go in with them because yeah. the rates that Crypto has given us the last few years. They've always been good. We are we are almost a hundred dollars a run cheaper. Yeah. Than yeah. And so, you know, so it, it's while they have a monopoly, they have it's still you do the best. They see monopoly lightly and be recorded. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's kind of like um it hasn't been, you know, some other districts across the state have become gouged you know especially yeah. when they went into uh covid and, and that kind of stuff there was a lot of legal battles yeah. around what they should have to pay and what they didn't have to pay and that kind of stuff so yeah um anyway so yeah there's real truth to that so yeah. that includes special education mm -hmm. routes as well so special education I routes we don't we don't have a contract uh we individually contract each route out and yeah. so what we're able to do with that is if we have if we have a run going down to so and somewhere, you know, let's say uh, uh, trying to come up with the name of outside program, but you know, there's one in Long Meadow. If that bus run is also doing one with Hadley, we could actually, if they're going through Hadley to get there, we'll split the cost. If we're sending two kids, so we look at each run separately, and so we use multiple vendors for that. Ripco does do some, some small runs with that, but. Um, JB Transportations are probably our main yeah. vendor for that. Okay. Um, and then, which we call just when I was, when I, not when I was in business, but, was, uh, um, but there's less and less of those. So those, yeah. those are extremely high. Yeah, yeah. So if you have some money you want to invest in something, yep. I, for sure. I am not sure. I didn't think I about it. Yeah, they want to invest, you know, you got half a million dollars to start a bus company. Yeah. Well, it's three hundred dollars a day. Yeah. So if you're doing a van, three hundred dollars a day. You pay off that van pretty quick. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's truth. We're all making a career right now. There's also a driver shortage. There is. There is. What's that? There's a driver shortage. Well, that's, that's the bigger yeah. problem. That's the bigger. <laughs> well, yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. All right, so good. Any else? Yeah. Comments or having? Already. Um. Uh. Actually, twenty-five capital projects. discussion. All right. So I sent out a digital file. I also uh, made a couple copies for people. People. 
Put it up front here. Yes, everybody. Okay. 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 Um, the blue is stuff that we're working on, and the green is proposals for next year. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll share it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can look up there as well. And then, um, so I'll just kind of review where we're at right now. Um, That's fine. Oh yeah, got it here. Great. Oh, do you actually have one? I printed off frontiers. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Right on it. Circle it. Right. Make smiley faces next to stuff. All right. Um, <laughs> or frown. Looking at the blue right now, you know we do have the um, eighty thousand put toward the um, eighty thousand, and then also the MVP grant for the front entryway. That's the pavement asphalt replacement. Um, we did just um, put forward twenty thousand dollars for um, engineering for the playground. Playground, thank you. Um, it's and then gonna be higher than that. it's going to be higher than that. We just got the estimate, right? We did twenty-seven thousand, I think. Yeah, I haven't gone through it page by page yet. We got the estimate this morning, um, and so we have to be. I'm not going to be an update on that. The estimate on the playground is coming in high because of approximately, I'm going off of, I just scanned it real quick. I didn't have to go through it, but around like six grand yeah. on the fact that it's close to the river and we're going to have to go through Conservation Commission. It's been within 100 feet of the river. And so, whether or not, even if the local Conservation Commission pushes it through without a problem, the playground's considered it's within the wetland zone. So, it's going to cost a lot. The whole playground, or just these things? It's about 100 feet to the corner to touch the building. So the building is like just outside of the wetland mm -hmm. zone. So we just a good majority of that time. is. Was that? We must have just missed that last time. That whole trip. Yeah, everywhere. It's all volunteers. <laughs> it's a bunch of volunteers. Um, however, the playground is there. They don't expect a lot of problems, yeah. but you know they're going to want to see um, because the. Structures already in place, and that you know, improvements they said actually would probably be easy to mm -hmm. do some plantings and that kind of stuff, and that's what they're going to want to yeah. see. But well, there's my more quick cost look than... through it today. I think their rates are comparable to other playground projects we've done, with the exception of right. that six or seven thousand dollars it was for. Them. So they came in close to the twenty thousand we thought it was going to be, and then that number on top. So, um, but we approved up to thirty. We did up to thirty. Yeah. We did up to 30, but it was kind of disappointing yeah. at yeah. the meeting. We did no yeah. more than 30. I see you should put a cap on it, remember? Okay, I remember that. Um, but you guys will have to sign off, vote, and to accept them that contract, right? Or have we been signing off? We're going to do it. Okay. They can appoint you as a. Right. They sign off on the bid after that. Thank you. Do um, you need that vote now? No, we did that. We um, the money to go forward. Yeah, to, we did to get a scope of service. But, a signature. but did they appoint you to sign that? Contract? Right. So I will send that off to everybody as soon as, um, like I said, it was received this morning. So yeah. Um, once we sign that off on that, I'll send it off to everybody. I'll send it off first. So you can look it over if there's any questions. Um, and then, the front entry project is combined with the asphalt replacement project. Um, Probably be putting the same thing. It's just a different funding line to match the grant. Um, and then we're going to get into the green here. There's a lot here, um, and we put it in order of administratively what the recommendation is mm -hmm. um, to continue the flooring upgrades to finish up those projects of the A wing. Um, we need to upgrade our BMS. And so the BMS is our building management system. And quite frankly, we're running on a very old system that is having trouble keeping up with the, um, not trouble keeping up, 
it's not been doing. Yankee work was going really well, though. What's that? Yankee work. Yankee work. Forget that, though. Done. Right. We said, don't stop for a minute. Don't stop for anything. Right. Um, so a building management system basically is, you know, each of the rooms are calling for energy, heat, and eventually we can tie in the cooling to it as well so that we can manage it from one location. A building management system also can, can manage your um, alarms for walk-ins, um, lighting, and that kind of stuff as well. Our current system is very old. If it does go down, we are in deep trouble because we'll probably basically have to hotwire the system in order to get it to run. Um, it's about 30 years old. It's running on Windows, and there's no longer any upgrades um, available um, to go for I mean, the system is very, uh, Frontier's in the same boat and Sunderland's in the same boat. Frontier's computer actually broke down and they had to get a computer out of the basement. We were fortunate that we saved a few to run Windows, to run the software that is no longer up there. Um, so we are on a time frame there to get that done. This The price of 35, about $35,000, $34,000 um, is also contingent then. Sunderland doing it as well. Because we said, what if we do both? Will you give us a better right. deal? And they said, this is if you do both schools at okay. the same time with the Siemens contract. Um, there are there are different companies out there. Our company, sir, currently Siemens is control. Equipment is in the building. So we're kind of stuck going towards Siemens unless you want to do a full overhaul and spend a lot more money. Like, I think it was like over 100,000 if you want to go away from Siemens and go to Although he said CTC wouldn't work in this larger building. Um, but there, I mean, there's these big companies that do management systems, but Siemens is one of the, is one of the bigger ones out there. Um, the Sunderland. And Sunderland would be on Siemens as well. Right, I was just thinking, you said if they do it at the same time, is if that they do it at the same time. Is, so what's that? So, is it likely? That so I had them a couple, two hours ago, I gave them the same information. So they're in the first phases and then they're gonna find out what it looks like capital wise. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if it doesn't, if they can't do it, then we'll go back and negotiate with them. What does that really mean? Is that a few thousand dollars more? I can't imagine it's more. Yeah. Know, so round up to you know, maybe 40,000 at the most, if you know, it can't be, they're not saving us tens of thousands of dollars just to go them. That's uh, just the panel or is that all the, Sensors around the controllers, the, and, the controllers and, everything. and everything. Yes. Oh, okay. Controllers and panel. Um, more reasonable than Frontier. What's that? More reasonable than Frontier. Frontier is bigger. Yes. And yeah. it's a different company. Right. And it's a different company. Yep. Yeah. Um, so okay. it's also important because eventually this doesn't include putting the AC units on the BMS. Okay. That's going to be another thing that we're going to go through on. I also have had light conversation with the energy committee about is that something that we can get grant work for because mm -hmm. it is actual money savings because right. right now our heaters boom up and they shoot out and they, we, what are we you know you have rooms that are too hot why are they too hot it's because the sensors are not reading and sending it right, the right. And so um yeah and is it yeah. just replacing the the management system or do you have to do electrical upgrades too is the system itself they don't have to do the the lines to the, the things, but they got to replace basically the thermostats in all of them so that mm -hmm. the, the sensors in the rooms are up to the new code as well. So um, it really is a, you, far, you have far more control if you can regulate, you know, sure. we instead of regulating within like four or five degrees, you can regulate within one degree, mm -hmm. you're saving money. Yep. So, it, it, you know, there is some energy savings there um, and as well. Um, replace phone system. So um, our phone systems right now, we can't add any more lines to them and to even purchase the phones is is a trick. They don't make them anymore. So we're usually on Amazon trying to see if they have some that are resold. Um, we also don't have caller ID and that is a problem if we have people that are calling in and we want to know kind of what's happening as far as the safety risk mm -hmm. um, assessment there. And um, I think those are the bigger pieces. Like if we don't, have, we actually can't even add another line. So if there's another room that needed a phone, we can't add a line to it. Do you remember when we last did them? Did we do them recently? Like the last? Not since I've been here. Not since we've been here. No, okay. Frontier did them. Maybe that's something. Frontier did theirs. Conway did theirs. Yep. Just to make them. 
Sunderland. Conway's on the list. Conway's doing it now. Sunderland just finished there. Okay. But so they're basically. And I think Waitley's is relatively new. I think Waitley's the home girls. Oh, boy. Everybody online must be going, what is going on there? <laughs> Fix your like, phone. That's the phone in the other room. Ring. Um, yeah, right. Okay. That makes sense. It also puts it on visual system as well. Yeah. Yes. So, all right. Yeah. Um, and then the next is continue the AC phases. Yeah. Um, this would be phase three of the AC, and the rooms listed there. Um, Basically, it's nine thousand dollars each. However, if there's a rebate next year, right. we have to budget as if there's not a rebate. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if there is a rebate, um, the town was very generous this year to have that pulled back in. You have more to do after that. Just to entice you a little bit, um, if you get all of those, that would be all the classrooms. The big classrooms. The, 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 Main classrooms, yep. um, and then after that, really phase four. <laughs> Come on, phase four, you get your room. Phase four. Obviously, <laughs> well, mine was first. <laughs> phase four would be all the it other was. rooms. <laughs> <laughs> for me. Um, all of the other rooms. So, like, we have some interventionist rooms sure. and um, offices. So yeah. that would be phase four. But this would finish up classrooms. Okay. Um, would phase four be the one with rebates? We'd be close to being done. I think it's eight and eight. So I did that proposal to go. I think we have 16 uh, so more. It will be close. It won't yeah. be as a big That's ass the well. following year. Right. Um, we have a map of it all. We can. Yeah. The um, talk about the video cameras, but also know that you don't have to talk about, um, you don't want to share. But don't I want to share? You don't want to say like, "Hey, the camera, there's no visual to oh, yeah. during the day." You don't yeah. want to say that. Just, 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 you don't you don't talk about security breaches when we talk about security. So yeah. really, nobody can see now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at increasing um, just our overall ability to pick up outside yeah. and inside. Okay, yeah. so, perfect. perfect. Different, different areas. And the technology is, I mean, the technology is, we've added over to Frontier. They want to bring over here as well with the 360 cameras. Yep. You can basically cover all zones very quickly. So we put them on the corners of Frontier. Yep. And now you can basically see, we can follow somebody walking almost all the way around the entire building. Mm -hmm. And the same idea here. They have outside okay. cameras that can do different things, but yeah. to be able to have full coverage. Um, yeah. Follow. Yeah. And, and again, that's, we don't have, um, it's, it's security. <laughs> security it's better than security it's better than alarm systems yeah if you can see everybody sure. coming yep um and then playground. playground you know obviously right now we're looking at the engineering and then the question about um, those are just some Equipment. older numbers based on what we'll wait till they come up with the concept but i think that this could get switched from ones though because the report says this would not be done until at least the summer of 2025. So yeah. this isn't an immediate ask, which but we just found out today. in the report today. So, but would uh, would you want to get the process going for hearings for CPA early? So it would be their budget for next year. Yeah. So we could go to them as no, a. It would be their 26 budget. It would be their 26. They're going to be working on 25. Okay. So, so Tina time. doesn't even know this yet either. I don't even want to look at her and say it's going to be another year. Yeah. yeah. They said there's not enough time to do the engineering and conservation work that needs to be done to do it to, next summer. Because basically, the converse, yeah, conservation takes. So they would start months. listening right in January. CPA would start listening in January. That's what okay. We had hoped that, that we would be able to start working on the applications. But okay. Maybe. So um, I think maybe. Um, I think, especially based on last year's working with CPA, they probably we need to do a little um, repair work there. I, I think I probably will go this year just to let them know what's the plan for next year and yep. um, as they look at recreation funding, right? If they're you know looking, okay, for, if they know there's a maybe it'd be a two-year project in the sense of funding, we maybe get a little bit more. Yeah, if, if they have nothing on the ballot right. this year, right? Um, okay, can I skip back to earlier things? We need 16 more for the, Okay. We did 11 this summer, so we would need 16 more to finish up. The 18. Weekend. Okay. So 
phase five. Then phase four was another eight or eight. Yeah, eight and eight. So eight next year, eight the year after. Right, year. but that's priced. That's priced at nine thousand dollars each. With no, with no, no rebate. rebate. We get forty percent rebate back. So just go easy math. You're getting four grand per back. So and then you, you rebate again. So they really, it only really cost five thousand dollars. So you really, you do that math. Or what the last right. year? Right. So how many? Yeah, five goes in seventy-two. Fourteen times. Yep. So after this phase is three, the sixty more. So we got, I see phase four as a priority for, and there'll be a phase five after that. So Correct. But with this rebate, phase five would be. A couple of them. Need okay. two to three, yeah, two to depending three on the eight. rebate. That's if the rebates again. This is all. Yeah. That's why we don't put the rebate in there because we don't know Eversource rebate plan for FY twenty five yet. Yeah. But it's been held the last three years. So. Yeah. And every year we threaten the school committee. It's going to go away. <laughs> so um, eventually it's going to. But yeah. Um, no, now's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just missed this, but when you say AC. Phase four is six rooms at 7,500 each, um, lower down. It's not on the screen there, but um, I just, is that, why are they, why are they less expensive? All right, so looking up here, at, this is nine, I don't know where you can look, yep. you can see. So this is, we have eight rooms at $9,000 each. We have to budget for them the actual cost. Okay. okay. The rebate on them this that. year. Oh sure. The rebate on them this year is is forty percent. Mm -hmm. So the actual cost of them is around five grand each. But the net I think cost. she's saying down. But down oh, below. Down below. Sorry, I was looking at. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear. Yeah. I wasn't listening to. That's okay. Yeah, no, it's not okay that you weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think you said phase four down below somewhere. Confused. So I think um, this is just a typo. Rope. They were seventy five hundred each, uh, probably when Bill added this to this. the list ah, yeah, okay. and now they're up to nine thousand. Okay. Oh, so we should update line 70. Okay. I didn't catch that. that. I'm good sorry. Catch, yeah. yeah. No, it's sorry. A good catch. Good oh yeah, that's exactly what it was. was they, so were like, they were that much they were that much last year. Yeah. 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 And it's actually eight rooms are left at yeah. 16 is at 16. So look at this is the beauty of a live document. <laughs> yes. Yay. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want a costume on me, but boom, just like that. So just how do you increase that? that? How do you want to pay for some of these? Cash. Um so basically so Trevor brings up the question of basically how are we paying for this, right? So yep. um what we'll do is we'll see what the capital committee is recommending. Mm -hmm. Um again, we create this list in a somewhat vacuum. So you know if the if the town was is has no free cash and no whatever. We don't know that when we create this. You know, right. we hear rumors, but, but the town is poor every year. So if you're maybe especially, really poor this year, but you're, poor this the way year. we look at it is you're poor every year. So um, we're going to bring this, we, we bring this forward, and then they kind of say, listen, these are the demands of the town education. You're not going to get that. Then we'll bring it back to the committee here and we'll say, okay, um, do we want to apply some school choice to certain things? You know, how far down the list will we be able to go? And that's when it becomes reality. And some of those ones will get turned to a two or 1.5, and we'll try next year. Yeah. Um, and that's just the reality of that. So, you know, already we kind of know that CPA is going to turn into a two, um, a little just like that. Um, and generally, each year we so fund, fund the flooring. You know, that's been an ongoing thing the town typically does. Right. So we put it in the order. Of which the administration deals, but yeah, it is. This is where your authority comes in. You could say you may like your flooring, Darius, but we really want to see the phone system done instead. You know, and that's so basically. I think the capital typically the town usually is expecting flooring to be on a capital request. Right, right. We usually support that. Well, that's one of those things where it's like we started the project to suddenly yeah. stop and prioritize something else when we're trying to get through the sure. whole so yeah, yeah. Um, and Ken used to take this list to the capital meetings, yeah. I think. Is the capital Did somebody reach out to you? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna come join? Yeah. Great. That's awesome. 
So, and then we can, I can prep you prior to that meeting to yeah. the final members and, and, and we're going to get a write up on the BMS system and why that's important. And we're doing that for some of them as well. Um, just so there's clarity of, it can get very confusing. At least we've heard of different, different stories. So, yeah, I guess just to clarify, are the, are all the number ones, are they number, are they ranked in any? Are they listed in like? They are listed system? in the administrative order. Okay. But, um, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just kidding. <laughs> but why'd you kick me? Because I wanted to. <laughs> 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 like, oh, um, yeah. I know. I, just, or I, was, I wasn't supposed to use. I was trying to be simple, there. <laughs> um, no, I was just thinking that um, when Tina was mentioning, uh, you know, video surveillance in the phone system, the security aspects of those mm -hmm. um, seem, I mean, obviously you don't want anyone getting hurt because the carpet, but how much, yeah, how, I guess it's how much is that an, um, a, a, a physical risk versus the security risks of so that's so that's they shall not be named right right so that's why <laughs> yeah. we i guess you have to say it would be higher on the list if we said we do have cameras in the building you know oh, I mean? yeah. so it'd be higher on the list if we felt like you know, there you know there's no the security is the number one concern because of mm -hmm. these these kind of things sure. um you know and it's the same kind of thing you know one could also say teachers who didn't get ac we could say Oh. You skip the floor and give me the AC. I'd rather have that. Oh, yeah. But there's also like, you know, we have right. a project about old carpet getting out, air mm -hmm. quality, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you know, this yeah. is no, this you, know, you gotta. Yeah, I mean that's why they're priority. <laughs> so that's why we, you know, we can justify it. There's maybe somewhere you could argue and you could say, okay, you know, you know, we we would back off. Um, no, I would certainly, I don't feel like there's any that should be taken off of that. It's just that if you have to say, okay, next we're doing this. Um, it's yeah. Well, and it's possible. I know that knowing, hearing about the town's finances. I live in town, so I can make jokes about it. Um, the, uh, <laughs> $5 million. Just, you know. just $5 million short. Stop. Um, World of hurt. We may not get to all our wins this year. So there might be a reality. So we might be actually having that discussion. Is everybody confident with what we're moving forward? Um, and how we're going to do it. It may be also looking at that. Is there grants and stuff also possibly yeah, available? Yeah. You know, and that's like the BMS system. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that maybe there might be some um, re energy kind of things on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They really want to see energy savings. Um, I don't know if we can prove it, but we can try. Special town meetings of the 23rd Frontier. So, all the special town meeting on the 23rd. So, October. yep, yep, on well, Mondays, and um, it's, um, yeah, we, we, need, we need money for the for the roads, for sure. We need to get, we're out of borrowing the five million bucks to try and pay back. The two and a half million we spent already on the roads, and they're probably two and a half we haven't done yet, just from July storm. And no aid? None from the state. None. None. Zero. So? But they're working on it. And they're working hard. If uh, we yeah. do five point two on that loan, there you go. Green, right? <laughs> We're done. We're done. We won't right. ask for anything. To exactly. Town. Just exactly. <laughs> Piggyback on. Right. Yeah, that's what, that's how Congress works. Yep. That's Is right. Sort of um, bring opportunities that would collaborate with John Chork around the video surveillance equipment. I know this helps yeah. in the past. It's a good thought. There has been some in the past. Um, there's been some safety grants. That's yeah. a good idea. And yeah, honestly, yeah, the phone thing seems like a safety. Like, mm -hmm. we should have caller yeah. ID. I didn't who's like who's calling in an yeah. issue or. I don't know. And I'm not sure if that's a grant thing. That's probably just like. Yeah, she always asks me who is this. That's our caller ID. I think it's really hard to put these in order, to be honest. Yeah, I really think they all well, are needed. I think actually uh, there would be some some grant opportunities from foundations out there with school safety. Just we have paid for entryway stuff and camera stuff in the past. Oh, okay, so, yeah, so yeah, I think it's actually um, might be a little help. Yeah. All right.
Who does the most of, just out of curiosity, who does the most um, researches and finds out about grants? Do we have anyone? We don't have a grant right yeah. Yeah. Primarily the curriculum directors, okay, for specific departments. Like sometimes IT will find the safe and supportive schools. Like I think we had that for um, the key fob upgrade paid was paid a lot from mostly grants right. or school lunch will find things related to equipment but it's department by department we just interviewed a uh, town planner grant writer tonight oh. made an offer so hopefully it'll be great to it? get him on board and yes yeah. absolutely it's hard to get help. people in that role and i think you and i were talking about they've actually started a um what's his name Good looking guy who is Kevin McDaniel. I was going to be seamless. It's like almost we planned that. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> uh, Matthew McConaughey is starting. Oh, oh this. Really this. 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 this is, this is, this is yeah. So I, I imagine right? somebody want to get on this board with him. But the he's created a foundation. Yeah. Because federal grants are so complicated yeah. to rural schools, yeah. yeah, and that rural schools can't go after the federal grants meant for them because they're so complicated because they don't have the support exactly. someplace. That Matthew McConaughey has created a foundation awesome. to support. Now this is really he's talking. He's from Texas. And, you know, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Texas sure. So, but yeah. so there's rural schools out there. Like, and so he's trying to. I, I just thought it was interesting. Like that's mess. It's like you that's can't do your taxes anymore. You got to We can't. Get federal yeah. funding because we don't even know how to do it. Right. But I just yeah. thought it was like how messed up the system is that you have to have a foundation in order to get federal money. But yep. yeah. I just got that email the other day. I should have thought. Yeah. Just because you know, math. I was going to right. ask why you know this <laughs> strange information. I, I should have forwarded it to you because Matthew was on the cover of it. Right. Sitting with children. Yep. It is deep voice. <laughs> Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> he had a shirt on, right? Can we have to his shirts off? All right, well, it's definitely after eight. Yeah. All right, we're getting punchy. What's in all those drinks? <laughs> 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 what's in them? It's just a hint. I know. Oh, all right. <laughs> we are a good bunch, right? This is a fun, fun group. You wonder why one didn't want to come back here? Oh, yes. 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 Schedule these for seven o'clock. Oh, oh yeah. Why do we? Yeah, why do we go five o'clock? You're so serious. <laughs> oh, boy. So, <laughs> like this. this is like <laughs> So sure are there any questions? Nope, nope. On. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you have a superintendent's report? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find that. Oh, oh, God. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm this is going to go viral. <laughs> You know what? I think we're going to have a lot more uh, applicants for the school committee position. I know. <laughs> I mean, well, this is fun. You're going to want to be out with us. Yeah. Okay. So if we are. No, you yeah, can move on. on. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is goal setting for the committee. So, Trevor, this is something we introduced last year. Um, just a, a place for us to talk about directions we want the community going particular things we want to focus on just a way of like how are we mm. using our so, our resources our time like what are we what is our goal here yeah um so it's just an open time if someone has something they looks really good about. i mean that'd be kind of sort of at some point doing looking at those um at like the equity auto and mm -hmm. How that could play. I mean, that seems to dovetail right in you know, mm -hmm. this this um, segment of the of the school committee um, meeting. Because uh, yeah, it would. It, it, I think that could give us some good guidelines on how to structure our structuring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been saying for a while. Yeah, we'll know more once we have the. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will do that. Yeah, but maybe next time we can look at yeah. some of those. Okay. You know, look at the maybe people can review. Like I'll definitely look at the recording and think about those questions and maybe talk about of course you'll be coming back from yeah. is, is the, so the conference. Mm -hmm. I mean that's a lot. So it's a great time. Yeah. Get a lot of you know, shot in the arm with good stuff, hear a lot yeah. of good things out there. And it was my going last year that mm -hmm. kind of made me feel like, you know, some of those things I brought back from that was about trying to look at our, um, how we, how we operate. So, so maybe, um, like next meeting, we stick this at the end so they could give reports and go and we could talk, okay. you know, mm -hmm. spend a little bit more time at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Where we're not holding up staff to True. do what they want to do. I mean, you're more than welcome to stay. <laughs> yeah. But usually you guys are running on to another meeting right, or something right. like that. So, yeah, no, that's a good point. We have our time to do sure. everything. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. I just sent everybody the link. I, I don't want you to think wait. that I was out of my mind. I just wanted to I want you to be like, wow, we thought of that in the meeting. That is impressive. I can't wait. So it's in your email. I can throw a little picture in there just to keep it just because I couldn't just send an email. <laughs> oh, I included you, Jen. I, I guess I just wanted to make sure that you were part of this. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, report. Okay. Uh, the chair has no report. Uh, collaborative. Um, I emailed everyone the yep. executive director's summary and um, Denise Storm, I think it was uh, from Conway. She suggested at the last meeting that wouldn't it be nice to get an even briefer one to share with my school committees because mm -hmm. it's 18 pages. Mm -hmm. Not everyone wants to read it. Uh, so he did his best to go down the four pages. So if right. you just want to quickly skim through something, that's the one you want. Uh, and very briefly, uh, we just had a presentation on a project, Ekin is named it, um, that has been piloted. They've been running for three years now out of Greenfield, and they're now working with the collaborative. And it's a project to reach high school juniors and seniors who are on the verge of dropping out, kids who have been coming to school but just are struggling in their classes. So it, um, they have, I think, to 15 students a year um, and are, have been working on improving graduation rates. Uh, often going on to the secondary, uh, to the college uh, school after high uh, school, and um, working with them on entrepreneurship skills as well. For those who are interested. So it's something like a program they're working with yeah. now, looking at the potential of expanding further to Franklin County in the future. So, right. so it was an interesting presentation. All right, superintendent's report. Um, I have no formal report, but uh, two just quick add ons. We did a uh, Four town safety meeting last week. Just kind of people know that we continuing those. We have three plans scheduled for this year. So all the police, fire, EMS, state police get together at Frontier with the four towns of the four towns and principals, and we go through our safety uh, measures with them. Next meeting we'll probably do to be last year we did tabletop exercises regarding evacuation. This we unfortunately this year we're going to be doing uh, active shooter. Um, but we go through that and then we also break up by each town, so how each town would operate. And as I said in other meetings, it, w this translates to other things that we have to do sometimes. Um, for instance, there was a rollover in 91 of a, a gas truck or something like that, and we, we had to be evacuated. It's the same kind of procedures, mm -hmm. that where are we going, how are we getting there, how are we organizing people, how are we releasing people, that kind of stuff. So um, anyways, that kind of work is, and it's kind of a check-in where each school, including the private schools, um, come in and meet, we all talk about mm -hmm. Um, keeping these things on the forefront, even um, when it's not always there. And then um, the administrative team today uh, did our first 90 minute of first 90 minute of three trainings on bi on biased hiring practices. Um, it was a really informative uh, meeting and interactive about you know, what we do to. I'm not interrupting. <laughs> we were on the administrative team. You were on the call, and then you went on oh, home. Um, and so. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. So looking at, you know, what our practices are and not just within the hiring itself, but then what kind of community are you creating to keep employees? Um, uh, the word was belonging. You know, get belonging after they're hired and how do you do that? So um, and it wasn't looking at all diversities. Um, 
that an employee brings from different backgrounds and um, to more as they see on the fourth on the base. Utilize a Talisa. You're very familiar with Liza Talisa. She was the on that table. She's really engaged. She wrote the um, I didn't need much just educator book. It's great. Thank you. And then drop. Yeah, that's all I got. Wait. I can't just put it on that bench. And our agenda, everybody looking for a motion if we turn. That motion. I second. All right. All in favor? All right. 